In this video, we will talk about imputation and scaling. Now for the rest of this lecture, we are going to work with this California housing prices regression data set. The prediction task is to predict median house values in California districts, given a number of features from these districts. I'm not pushing the data into the course repository. If you want to run the notebook, you will have to download the data set yourself using this link and put it under the data folder. Okay, so let me run this cell. I'm reading my CSV and the first thing that I'm doing here is splitting my data into train and test splits. So I have my train DF and test DF and here are a few rows first few rows of my train DF. So what we see here is we have total number of households in that given district. We have median house values, and then we have some total rooms, total bedrooms. If you read the data description, some of the columns are mean or median values for all houses in that district. But some of them are not. So this column, for instance, total rooms or total bedrooms, they are total number of rooms in all households in that particular district. So I'm going to add some new features to the data set, which might help us predicting the target because our target is median house value. And so maybe it makes sense to have some mean or median values for each columns. I'm adding these three features. The first feature is rooms per household, which is like total number of rooms over households in that district. My second feature is bedrooms per household. And my third feature is population per household. You might come up with some better features here. I'm just trying to keep things simple. Okay, so let me run this. And this is my new train DF now. I have added these three features here. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, why did we split the data before creating these new features? Since we have split the data before, we have to do all these things for train and test separately. So why do we do it after splitting the data? Now, in this particular case, it would have been okay to create these features and then split the data because we are working on a row by row basis when we are creating these features. We are not using any global information about the data when we are creating these new features. That said, for me, whenever I build a machine learning pipeline, I always start with splitting the data. Because if you don't do it, there is a chance that you will accidentally break the golden rule. So it's always a good idea to be extra, extra careful and to be safe and split the data before. Yes, the, it makes you do more work, but it's better than breaking the golden rule accidentally. Let's start with simple EDA. Now first, I'm just showing first few rows of, of our train DF. One thing to notice here is the feature scales are quite different in our data. So we have population, households, total bedrooms. They are bigger numbers, larger scales. Now this is our target value, so it's okay to have large scale here. And then median income, it's in a different scale. And then we have longitude, latitude, they have a different scale. So it will be useful to bring all the features in the same scale. Now I'm looking at the data and I feel like maybe it would have made sense to remove uh, total bedrooms, total rooms and population features. But for now, for this lesson, I'm just leaving them in. Maybe you can try on your own by removing these four features and see if you see any difference in the results. The next thing that I'm trying is 
traindf.info. I'm getting information about the data types of our columns here. And most of our columns are numeric type, except this one column, ocean proximity, which is string type. That's what we see here, which is a categorical variable. Okay, so we have one categorical feature and all other features are numeric. Now let's see what traindf.describe give us. What I see here is for this column, total bedrooms. And because of that, this new column that we have created, bedrooms per household, we have some missing values here. The counts for these two columns, they do not match with counts for other columns. Now let's check how many missing values are there. There are 207 missing values. Okay, so, so far we have seen that in our data, there are some missing values in total bedrooms. And because of that, our new column bedrooms per household, both of them have some missing values. Then the scales are quite different across columns. And third thing is there is this categorical variable ocean proximity. For now, I'm going to drop ocean proximity feature. We will look at that later in the lecture. And I'm creating my X train Y train and X test Y test. Let's start with the baseline model so that we have a reference point. In our case, we are working with a regression problem. So we will be using Cyclone's dummy regressor as our baseline model. Now we will be carrying out a number of experiments. We will be trying out different models on this data set. So we will have to keep track of the results given by these models. Here is how I usually do this. First, I'm defining this results dictionary. This dictionary is going to store model names as keys and corresponding results as values. Now I have written this function called mean std cross val scores. Here is what it does. It takes the model x train and y train as input. It carries out cross validation using the model on x train and y train and it returns mean scores with standard deviation in a nicely formatted panda series. So let's try this out. First, I'm creating the regressor object here. I'm carrying out cross validation using this mean std cross val scores function. And I'm storing the results in our results dictionary. And here are our results. We have mean fit time, score time, test score, that is validation score and train score. And in parentheses, we have standard deviation for each of these. Now remember that we are working with a regression problem. And in regression problems, when we call score in scikit-learn, it returns R square score. And R square score for baseline models is close to zero. Now the next topic is imputation. We want to tackle three things that we saw before. We have missing values, the scales are different, and we have a categorical variable. So let's tackle the first thing, missing values. Now I'm trying KNN regressor here. I'm creating my class object and I'm fitting KNN regressor on my training, uh, my X train and Y train. And now it's not going to work. It's going to complain about missing values. Input contains none. That's what it says. So what's the problem? The problem is that, as we saw before, our two columns, they have missing values. Now, what are the options here? How can we deal with these missing values? One way is to delete all the rows with missing values, but then you are losing the data. And if you don't have enough data, this is not a very good option. If there are too many missing values in a column, then you can get rid of that column. Or there is this other way called imputation. What it does is it comes up with some reasonable values and then you replace your missing values with that reasonable value. For example, for categorical columns, you can replace 
NAN values, you can replace missing values with the most frequent value. Or you can replace missing values with some kind of a string called like missing. So you treat this new value missing as a new value for that categorical variable. For numeric columns, one strategy is to replace missing values with the mean or median for that column. Again, as I mentioned before, missing data is a big topic. There are books written on it. In this particular lecture and in this class, we are going with a very, very simple approach. We are going to use this simple imputer, which comes up with these reasonable values so that you can work with real world data and you can build your machine learning pipelines. Okay, now let's see how do we use this imputation using scikit-learn. Now scikit-learn has this transformer called simple imputer. And first thing you will have to do is import that simple imputer. I'm not doing it here because I have done it at the top of the notebook. Let's look at our total bedrooms column. What we see here is there are multiple NAN values here, some multiple missing values here. Now remember that we have dropped our categorical column. So all columns in our data now are numeric columns. So now I'm creating this imputer object here. I'm using median as the strategy for imputation. Then I'm fitting my transformer. I'm transforming my training data. I'm also applying the same transformation on the test data. Now let's check whether the imputer has done its job. So for instance, for this particular row with index 7763, we see that there is uh, total bedrooms value is missing. And after applying the transformer, total bedrooms is not missing anymore for this particular row. Okay, we have some value there. So imputer has done its job. That's good. Now let's try KNN on our imputed data. Again, KNN is doing pretty bad. The training score is 0 0.50. Okay, so it's not really doing very well here. Our next topic is scaling. In the last video, we noted that scaling makes a big difference for KNNs. It also affects many other machine learning methods. And there are a number of approaches to this problem. We are going to look into two most popular ones, standardization and normalization. In standardization, what we do is we set the sample mean to zero and standard deviation to one. We do that using standard scalar transformer in scikit-learn. For normalization, we set the range to zero and one. And in scikit-learn, we do that using this transformer called min-max scalar. Here is some visualization for this. So suppose this is your original data. And then when you call standard scalar, when you carry out standardization, it brings your data here so that your mean is zero and your standard deviation is one. And in case of min-max scalar, it brings all your data in this range zero to one. Okay, then now there are also other methods for scaling like robust scalar or normalizer. We are not going to talk about them in this particular lecture or in this class, but if you want to know more about them, there are many different articles or you can also check out scikit-learn documentation. Okay, now let's try standard scalar and min-max scalar. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm importing both of them. Then I'm creating an object of my standard scalar. I'm fitting the transformer. I'm transforming my train data and I'm transforming my test data. Now this syntax, this fit transform, we haven't seen it before. Since for the training portion, for the train split, 
we want to do fit and transform both there is this shorthand for doing it you can do it using fit underscore transform but remember not to use it at all for test for test you don't want to fit you only want to transform okay now after scaling this is our new data frame as we can see here all our features seem to be in the same scale now now let's try our KNN regressor again and as we can see here our scores have improved a lot now our R square score now is 0 0.80 one more point here when we call scalar.fit or scalar.transform we are using the imputed data here okay we are not using original x train and y train so these pre-processing steps they are kind of sequential first we carried out imputation and our next step is to carry out scaling so here i'm passing my x train imp which was my imputed data and for test as well i'm passing x test imputed Okay. Now for min max scalar, I again do the same thing. I create my class object and then I call fit transform on the class object for the training data and transform on the test data. Here is my data after transformation. And as we can see now, all the values here are in the range zero to one. Let's train KNN with min max scalar Again, we see a big improvement compared to unscaled data, but we don't see a big difference between min-max scalar results and our standard scalar results. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why are we looking at training scores? They don't tell us anything about test scores or our deployment performance. And actually, we should be carrying out cross-validation and looking at cross-validation scores. In the next video, we will talk about this and its relation to the golden rule.